What is your opinion on all the other Gospels that were thrown out and not considered to be Scripture by the early church? <laughs> yeah. Two minutes. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, I don't have a blanket opinion about them. Some are better than others. Some have got good things in them. Uh, some of them have got really dumb things in them. Um, but I guess the, 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 the most important thing to say about them is this. All right. Especially in light of the fact that now with the Da Vinci Code, and uh, you, know, you just got a lot of stuff going on there, the gospel of Judas, and could this be the real Judas? Uh, you know, and, and what's happening is that you're finding some people taking these, these accounts, uh, these gospels that we now have discovered through the Nag Hammadi Library and, and other places, um, and, and acting as though or arguing as though these are on equal par with the canonical gospels, the gospels that are found in the New Testament. And given the amount of time I have, I'll, I'll just say this. Assess those Gospels, any of them, Gospel of Truth, uh, Gospel of Peter, Gospel of Thomas, uh, assess any of them uh, on the basis of standard historical criteria, and they don't give you any reasons for thinking that in any substantial way they go back to the historical Jesus. There may be parts of them, especially the Gospel of Thomas. Uh, there's, there's reason to think that they actually report some sayings of Jesus that go back to the, to, to the original, or at least are approximations. But on the whole, the Gospel of Thomas, and certainly all the other ones, give us all the reasons for thinking that they were just creations of people's imaginations in the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th centuries. Um, and, and so there's just no reason to put any kind of historical uh, you know, credibility, substantial historical credibility in, in any of them. So there may be some edifying teachings in some of them and whatnot, uh, but on the whole, I don't think they're of, of much historical value whatsoever. It's really interesting how... I'll end with this, because this is really kind of in, in, in style now. Uh, people quote these other Gospels and, and you know, to try to argue that, gosh, there's a lot of truth there that the church just arbitrarily, the early church fathers just sort of rejected because they didn't like it and they're trying to strong arm, or, strong arm orthodoxy on everybody and whatever. And so they quote little things uh, from these Gospels that are kind of nice. But it's very selective. Uh, did any of you see the movie a couple of years ago called Stigmata? No. Well, it wasn't that good of a movie anyways. But, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing. The whole thing was a piece of propaganda on one level. It was a, just a good adventure on, on a different level. But supposedly, there's this truth that the church knows about. The Catholic Church is speaking of specifically here. And they're trying to cover it up. And, 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 and it's because of this gospel that reveals the true Jesus as opposed to the gospels in the Bible. And, and the, the, the true Jesus is the Jesus that says, and this is right out of the, uh, the gospel of uh, uh, truth, um, it's called the Gospel of Truth. It says, if you split a piece of wood, I am there. If you lift, uh, lift up a rock, you will behold me. And so this is a mystical Jesus that's in wood and under rocks and everywhere. And that's different than this person who is walking around supposedly doing miracles or whatever. So this is a mystical gospel that the church doesn't want you to hear about. Now that, and then at the end of the movie, it says, to this day, the church, the Catholic Church has not admitted the authenticity of the Gospel of Truth. Well, that's because there is no authenticity to the gospel of truth. You can like that one verse, you know, that, oh, lift a rock and you'll find Jesus, split some wood and he is there. Read to the end of the thing. It's only 144 verses long. The last verse, or I think second last verse, it says, unless a woman becomes a man, she cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Why don't they quote that verse and make a movie out of it? See, you know, that was common Gnostic teaching. Gnosticism was a form of religion, kind of like a New Age movement that was all over the place. And they appropriated, they, they gathered, you know, material from all these different sources, including the New Testament, and they wove it into their own kind of thing, like a lot of people are doing today. The Secret, for example, is a great example of that. We take a little Christianity, a little Hinduism, a little Buddhism, Buddhism and you seconds. put it together. Okay, hang on, hang on. Okay, 30 seconds. And uh, uh, that's what they did back then. But... To, to make it like, like that gospel is somehow more historically accurate or authentic than the canonical gospels, there's just no historical evidence for that. And they're being very selective when they quote a little bit of it and don't leave, uh, leave the rest for people to just guess about.